Greetings Mac Warriors, hello ladies and gentlemen, this is TTB speaking and welcome back to Mac Warrior Online and today we are playing the Cicada 3M in a long range support build. Let's go ahead and have a look at the build if I find the right button to press. There we go. XL 260 engine and that powers our three ER large lasers, one double heatsink in the right side torso and Guardian ECM in the left torso. You could also put the heatsink uh, over onto the left torso and try to crit pad the Guardian ECM a little bit. That is just up to you. Um, so either way is fine. We need to remove a little bit of armor from the head, um, but that is basically all that you need to do for um, making this mech useful. 27 firepower with the ER Dutch lasers at a range of uh, 675 plus, of course, the skill range. So you can basically shoot this at about 800 meters with no damage drop off, 27 alpha straight to the face, 105 kph. So this is a rather slow cicada, but we don't need that much speed. We just need enough speed to be able to maneuver around. And the heat management 1.25, not great, but not too bad either. Let's have a look into the skill tree that I prepared for you guys. And as you can see, of course, we're taking the firepower tree, we're taking all the laser duration nodes, extremely important. The uh, ER large lasers have a long burn time, so we want to make sure you shorten that burn time a little bit. We also take the heat gen nodes in the middle as well. That's five more heat gen nodes that we can take to lower our heat generation. Then we go into the survival tree. We take the left side of the survival tree, including one skeletal density node that is optional. Nothing in mobility, not really needed. We don't have jump jets, also not needed. Operations, full operations, because this mech runs quite hot, so together with the heat gen from the firepower tree and heat containment and cool run, we should be able to keep this mech reasonably cool, but you still need to watch your fire, of course. Sensors, extremely important. We need enhanced ECM 1 and 2, otherwise the ECM will be useless on our mech. We also take seismic 1 and 2, because we're only spending 4 points here, guys, but it is extremely valuable to notice when somebody is trying to sneak up on you, and uh, that can make the difference of you being able to fight or even escape, or you just dying because somebody just quits your back out. So I recommend you take the 4 points and invest them into seismic here, and also invest 2 points into advanced zoom if you want it. If you don't play without, uh, with advanced zoom, then you could put these 2 points into survival, into a little bit more tankiness. Finally, last but not least, double cool shot with cool shot cooldown and double artillery strike and that rounds out the build. Let's go ahead and take this thing into the dropship and see how it performs. I'll see you there. Alrighty guys, here we are on our first map. It is Forest Colony Snow and I'm gonna use my lasers here and I'm going to abuse them to the max. Please take note guys, the heat development that you're seeing in the two videos today is from a mech that basically has no skill points in it. So if you follow my advice with the skill points, your mech will run a lot more cool and uh, it will allow you to shoot a lot more than I can this round. Let's try and see and find some targets here. I'm just basically shooting on pixels and uh, if I hit something, I'm using the target glow, the glow that you see from your lasers melting the enemy's armor, uh, to basically find a point of reference where I can aim and shoot. Um, it's really hard to find targets here though, because um, as you can see, the trees don't really fall on old forest colony, they don't really exist. Uh, maybe that's the reason why the uh, map generally has a better performance than other maps right now. But uh, yeah, so that means we can't drop them down, which means you have to work around them or shoot through them. Everything is fine. And there's an enemy house spawn above uh, on the uh, Charlie Free side right now, and I'm just gonna go ahead and shoot him a little bit. Uh, he's gone now, so I'm just trying to keep an overwatch here on that left side and kind of deny the enemy from going there. And if I'm successful with that, then um, we might have a good time in this round. Uh, didn't really hit that light mech, unfortunately. I know that there's an enemy light mech in Echo 4, Echo 5 right now, but there's nothing you can do about him. Uh, I don't really have the weapon loadout to deal with enemy lights. We have three ER large lasers, which is really good for trading damage at long, long ranges, but it's really, really bad at uh, hunting down light mechs. So I'm going to focus on Fox Trot and other big targets. Let's see if we can find them. I think it was in Bravo 3 or Charlie 3, somewhere there. Nope, oh, there's an assault mech. Let's go ahead, uh, get him into target mode, it's India, and uh, shoot him a little bit. There we go, and back to cover. See, that's simple. We get your shot in target, and uh, do some damage, and then we dart back into cover again. And if we can do that successfully, without taking too much counter fire, then everything is hunky-dory. Um, I can't really see targets right now. Ah, let's go on Foxtrot here. It's a missed links, okay. We take a little bit of counter fire, so it is time for us now to reposition. As soon as you feel that the enemy has kind of found out your position and they have zeroed in on you, that's the point in time where you have to move around and reposition. Um, and you can also use that to cool your mech down a little bit. Let's see if I can help my teammate here. That's a piranha. Uh, 
Um, maybe we can give him a good volley, but it's going to be hard. It's an extremely nimble and fast mech, but if he walks straight to us, we can do some good damage. Here we go. Um, yeah, we barely nicked him. Um, that didn't do much damage whatsoever. Um, I'm gonna try and help my assault mech here a little bit if I can, but I also need to be careful because enemy team is pushing in on this side. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and opt to shoot the Vindicator instead. Um, maybe get him to stop in his tracks and not jump on our, my assault mech down in Delta 4 as well. Again, just trying to hold Target angles, acquired. just trying to spread damage wherever I can, maybe go in on the Piranha, shoot him a little bit. Um, and now we have to cool down at this point. Again, cooling down, switching positions. You want to be annoying, you want to be the annoying little cicada that people want to just want to hunt down and then they will overextend and walk towards acquired. you and then you can go ahead and kill them. It's going on the Atlas, that's a big nice target for us and that allows us to do a good amount of damage to his CT. Um, still acquired. no point in going in, I see the Piranha up top now, um, can't really reach him. My team is spread out quite big time, uh, look at that, we are in Delta 5, we're in Charlie 4, we're in Bravo 3, we're in Charlie 3. Uh, we're all over the place, which I don't like because the enemy team, they might be sandwiched in between, but they are standing much more compact and that is always the better way to be organized as a team. Asking for help right now, trying to turn around on the Vindicator. Unfortunately, uh, the Mad Cat buddy ignores him. Okay, now he doesn't ignore him anymore because he lost his arm. He's lying on the ground. Oh, no, he lost his mech. Okay, never mind then. Um, I'm gonna get out of there and find a different position to shoot from. Maybe from up here, going on the enemy. Oh, is that an Orion or something? Target Bravo, Orion to see. Yep. Let him have a little bit of ye old ER large laser massage. One more for the road and keep going. He's got ATMs in the UAC-10, okay. Yeah. It's not a good idea to stick around in Charlie 4, as you can see the enemy is pushing into Delta 4 right now. So I just gotta keep walking and uh, keep finding different new positions to shoot from. Maybe going on the Hellspawn and then suddenly Atlas. Yep, I forgot about this guy. Okay, uh, ouchie. Let's uh, get around the corner and uh, not try and wrestle with the Atlas. That is like, I don't know. Some some random girl going up against Hulk Hogan in his prime. I don't want to do that. But what I want to do is shoot the Atlas from up top because that is an area where he can't fight back. Yeah. Okay. Target Can destroy. we get another shot onto the Atlas? No. Target Maybe the. Acquired. Nope. We can't hit him as well. Okay. Let's stay here. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Now we shoot the Atlas. Get a little bit of damage onto his side torso if at all possible. Come on. Give me that side torso. Ah, I didn't hit it correctly. Uh, it's open though. One more shot should kill him if we can get now. Well, if you can get the teammate in between the enemy and me, so that uh, he gets saved for the time being, but the teammate finally kills him, so that's good. A uh, little bit disappointing though. Let's try and find a new target here. Seven kills for us is eight, so it is anybody's game still, but the enemy team is looking a little bit better right now, in my opinion. Let's see, let's go on the side trust of the Hellbringer, target Lima. One more shot should actually pop that. Let's go ahead and go chain fire on the side trust. There we go, side trust are gone. Two heavy large lasers taken out of the field, that was important. Now we can go in on the Hellbringer again, since he's walking away from us. Do a little bit more damage to his back. Um, override a little bit, but don't cook ourselves, that's important. We need to be careful now. And here's the problem, guys. At this point in the match, um, I simply cannot keep up the volume of fire required to deal with all these targets. I'm severely heat capped right now, so I'm just trying to dodge, trying to uh, maybe draw the enemy a little bit wider, but uh, they're not going for it unfortunately. So I'm um, just gonna go for any target I can find, for example that indicator over here. Keep walking, keep twisting, maybe even get the Hellbringer. I mean he does look juicy, he does look juicy, I, I kid you not. Uh, two shots to his side torso will seal the deal. If he overheats, I'm gonna get him. Let's go for the side torso. Let's twist. Yeah, side torso is open and he does not die. Okay. Chain fire time. Come on. There we go. Chain fire. Yes! I got him! I got him. And then I was got. But that is okay. That is okay. We got our kills, guys. We got our kill. Beautiful. Alright, let's see what's happening here. Uh, nothing, nothing. Oh yeah, right. We had uh, two lights running around, nothing uh, big was happening anymore, so let's just jump right into the end score. One killing blow, one solo kill, five assists, two KMDDs, 584 damage done, four components taken out, and that is, I would say, a solid first round with that Cicada. As you can see, you can do quite a bit of damage with this. Um, 
You're not gonna do insane amounts of damage, of course, but uh, it's alright. Guys, if you like this content, check out my Patreon page, become an active supporter of the channel and join the ranks of the patrons and we are going to join the battle right here on Mining Collective. I have walked around the enemy team and now we're going to shoot any enemy stragglers that we can find. For example, that Vapor Eagle, yeah, he's gonna get a little bit of laser massage. Uh, we also find a Fafnir. Interesting. And look at that, he's got a little locust on him. And the locust has got wings! Oh, how beautiful is that? That is great mech cosplay. A little locust with wings. <laughs> I'm gonna use my lasers here to uh, try and shoot the Fafnir in the back. Uh, he's red CT right now, one more shot should kill him. Come on. Ah, I missed it. I missed it and I went into override. Cooked myself a little bit here. That is unfortunate. There we go. Got the shot on the Fafnir. And then we find the next target over here. Look at that, Echo 6, another assault mech, just waiting for us. I didn't really see what it was, but it's okay. But I'm just gonna go ahead and join my teammates to try and take him out. Um, it's a little bit unfortunate that I overheated there too much, so we did a little bit of damage to our CT. Um, that is not advisable, so as I said, guys, you need to be very careful with your heat management. But it's gonna be a good test for this mech if it is viable or not, because on a map like this, um, you don't have that huge range that you normally get, so... Um, this will be a little bit harder to pull off, but let's try and see what we can do here. Going in on the Kodiak, onto the back, he drops, beautiful, nice job guys. Two assault mechs down on this side already, it's starting good. Now I can't get up here I think, yeah, I need jump jets for that, so I might tap the base here. It's okay though. Let's get around the corner here, and now I'm going to look for targets up top that I can shoot. For example, this gentleman right here, a javelin going on the side torso, and uh, one more shot should actually take the side torso away if he stays there. Um, since he doesn't do that, we're just going to take another shot on another target of opportunity, and back into cover. Guys, this movement is very important for this build. You can't just stand around. You've got to keep moving, and keep in mind, guys, you are in a cicada. And that means you don't you really target. necessarily want to face tank targets. Oh, and there's a stealth dude over there. Let's go ahead and get his arm at least and maybe get his side torso. That's a stealth Thanatos. As you can see, I'm in cover, I'm cooling down and I'm only showing myself again at the point where I can shoot. I don't show myself beforehand. That would be pointless and I'm just waiting. Waiting and cooling down. Maybe go in on the enemy Irby here uh, with the shot a little bit. Was trying to get his, uh, his arm there. Now we can go back in on the Thanatos, give him a nice lick to the side torso. We are very hot right now, so back to cover a little bit, just holding out here, trying to find targets. Uh, New target acquired. Nothing there. I don't know how healthy the Thanatos is. I'm going for the side torso again, but uh, I think he saw me now. Yeah, he did see me. Absolutely did see me. He's looking at me. I'm still holding this position, however. Maybe we can go in on the Javelin, do some damage here. Nope, not enough, unfortunately. And now we drop down. Well. Uh, let's check the tunnel again, and see if we can find anything there. Ah, uh, hello. Nothing, okay. Let's get a little bit closer, maybe get on Delta on the Vapor Eagle. And then Thanatos around the corner. Yep, yeah, he's coming for me. Missed the shot though, so that's good. Um, let's go up here maybe. We're actually maybe try and brought it up with him, I don't know how damaged he is, however. So, um, this might be good, this might be very bad. Yep. And here's the problem with the ER large lasers, you have a lot of burn time, which means a lot of face time onto the enemy, I'm trying to shield with a side torso here. But uh, for some reason, all the shots go through on the CT. Trying to shield again with the side of the mech. This time it actually worked, so let's go in, get another lick onto the enemy. Use the side to shield again, and we die. Um, sad face. Well, one killing blow only. But again, we had a good job of, of going onto the side here. Dishing out damage to the enemy, one killing blow, four assists, 431 damage done with four components taken out, still amongst the higher damage dealers of the team. Thanks for watching, TTB out.